So we're continuing with our series of Finding Faith at the Movies, and today we're looking at what it means to be called. Um, with Moana, who is called as a baby who is so young, she later tells her grandmother, when her grandmother talks to her about the call, and her grandmother being there, that she thought it was a dream. Um, but the sea sees something in her, uh, much like God sees uh, in King David. And when God sends Samuel, um, the priest, to anoint the new king over Israel, and Samuel goes before all of Jesse's sons and then finds out that God's going to choose David, Samuel has some words for God because God really did not choose right on this one. And Samuel's going to let God know that, mm, I don't, I'm not so sure here. And the verse that happens of God responding to Samuel is that God does not see as humans see. Humans see only with their eyes. God looks into the heart. And so here we have a moment of call that happens looking into Moana's heart. So the little green um, pebble that was coming forward to Moana is the heart of Te Fiti, the goddess who created the islands um, in this story. And the story is that Maui, um, a demigod, uh, stole Te Fiti's heart to give to the humans so the humans could do their own creating. Um, but then that brought death and darkness and monsters and all kinds of bad things, um, not only uh, to the island where Te Fiti is, um, but then also to all the other islands. And so this is the sea calling Moana to return the heart with Maui um, back to Te Fiti to restore life as it should be. And 
In our scripture reading that Rob read for us, God calls Jeremiah to restore the nation of Israel back to who they should be. They were founded from a call to Abraham to be the people through whom all the peoples of the earth are blessed. But they had lost their way in that call and were beginning to serve um, their own needs at the temple and were abandoning the widow and the orphan and the alien who needed them most. And so God is calling Jeremiah um, to call the people home, to call the people back to life, to call the people back to the order that was created in the beginning. And Jeremiah protests too. He says, I'm but a child. What, right? Like, it can't be me. You, you have to have chosen or called the wrong person. Definitely not this person. I'm too young. At which point... If I were God, I would just have this moment because I don't know if you, Barry, can you bring the Jeremiah passage back up? It's this beautiful moment where God's telling Jeremiah how he knew him before he formed him in his mother's womb. It's this gorgeous thing. Um, One more slide. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And so God's like, seriously, after that speech about me telling you how well I know you, you're going to be like, no, just kidding, you have the wrong guy. And and so there's this moment of negotiation, right? And and God's like, no, I, I really do know. Like, I get that you've been taught that you're too young or there's something else that definitely makes it so that this won't work, but I hold truth. I formed you. I consecrated you. I called you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and, and so this does work, and Jeremiah does go and does preach what God asks him to preach, um, just like Moana, even though she tries really hard to follow what her dad wants and to not go beyond the reef, um, the ocean keeps calling her back, and so eventually she does go because the curse reaches their island, and their coconuts aren't growing, there's no fish to catch, there's no way. What I want for us to notice in this moment, that Moana's father wants her and the village to stay out of love, out of protection, out of an experience of going beyond the reef and his best friend dying, and wants what's best. And Moana wants to go and to leave the island and to go beyond the reef to try to fix what's going on so that they can be okay. So both the call to stay and both the call to go are both anchored in love. And that gets hard when they conflict with each other, but it's that love that's going to bring them through this all in the end as well. And it's Moana's dad's mother, Moana's grandmother, that helps her find that call and listen to that voice as much as she's been trying and wanting to listen to her father's voice as well. And so she does go beyond the reef a couple times. There's a couple skirmishes that don't work and go back and get the right boat. And she goes out and she conquers some coconuts. She conquers this really sparkly decapod, not nice crab. Um, And they keep going. But then there comes a time where they finally, and I'm saying they because at this point Maui is with her and they've got the hook and they're going to Defeaty to restore the heart. But there's this lava monster to Ka that has just stopped them. And the monster has broken Maui's hook. And at this point, Moana's just not coming back. At this point, at this failure, Moana thinks the sea has chosen the wrong person, that she's really not the one to restore the heart, that this really wasn't her call. And so we come at this point where she has just told the sea that the sea has to choose someone else. And her grandmother's spirit then comes to her.
And so Moana chooses her call again. This is my favorite part of this movie because this is my favorite part about being called that we don't ever talk about. We talk about the very beginning where we're all getting each other inspired and geared up to set out. But there's always going to be sabotage. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. And we don't talk about well enough reclaiming the call, choosing it again, and not being afraid of failure. This one shift for Moana, this one key shift that makes everything possible from moving to a tiny seed to a huge bush and tree of love. This is, this is that change. This is listening to the voice that is inside us, listening to our truth, listening and knowing who we are. And when we can't do that, Having a community that can sing that heart song, that can remind us of our call and of who we are when we've forgotten. That's why we can't do this journey alone, because there will be things that are beyond us. If we dare to journey beyond the reef, beyond our control, then we step into danger, because creation always involves danger, because it's a reliance on the untried which means bad things can happen as much as it means good things can happen. But failure means we're trying. Failure means that we've given room for possibility beyond our control, beyond what we know we can do and are fine doing. Failure means that God has a chance to break down that mustard seed to put out some roots that can grow somewhere. Failure doesn't even necessarily mean that our truth is wrong. It just means that there are other truths out there that need to be taken into account as well. And we're never going to find what those other truths are if we never go beyond ours, if we never go beyond the reef. So failure doesn't have to end us. It doesn't have to unmake us. It doesn't have to be something that we internalize to mean that we're worthless, that we're giftedless, that God made a mistake making us. Failure means we're partnering with God. It means that we're in it. We're in way over our heads, way beyond the reef. We've gone so far. And that's where the transformation, that's where the salvation can happen because that's where we can discover more than who we are, a truth that is greater than ourselves, a truth that can bring life and life abundant that we can't because we're finite, we're the created. And that's what I love about this moment, because if we do use that key shift, if we don't stop at failure, but if we wear it proud as a badge of who we are and what we've tried and what we've given God room to do, then everything can change. Everything can grow. And if we're able to come to one another in those moments of failure, like Grandma Tala comes to Moana, and what we didn't see was her giving her permission to go back home. You've come farther than anyone has. More has been asked of you. You've taken more on than most anyone. If you need to go back, if you're too hurt, then do it. And that's when this clip started with Moana hesitating and wanting, remembering how much she wanted that more, how much the island she's going back to is dying, and if she ends up back there without restoring the heart, then nothing has changed. And so she really does want that change. She really does want that new possibility. And that, with her ancestors, with the whole body and the community of Christ, and the spirits and our our, our saints that have gone before us, give her the energy to try again. And when she tries again, when she learns from her scars, 
this is what she finds. making a mountain tree of love. Moana was able to give to another what her grandmother gave to her. Moana was able to see as the Lord sees into the heart. Moana was able to see what happens when the heart, when our heart is stolen from us. I mean, we can't help but see the crossing the Red Sea parallels here, right? And what happens when we are entrapped and enslaved and how much we lose our song and lose who we are and need someone to sing that back to us, to restore our heart, to make us who we are, to give us that chance again. All of this because Moana didn't let failure end her. She didn't let failure unmake her. And the movie ends with her traveling back to her island and her dad embracing her, not being mad. She's like, I may have gone a little farther than the reef. Um, and in that moment, because her father's love, her father's desire to have them stay was based in love, he was able to change too. He was able to see how it suits you as her, his response to Moana. 
And that whole family, that whole clan is able to reclaim a piece of who they were that they had lost in terms of voyaging. Maui himself was able to go farther than where he was able to risk and being scared of Taka and not wanting to go up against that monster again. All because one mustard seed, one girl, didn't let that moment be the end for her and was able to, in that moment, be that blessing that God worked through for everyone else. So this is a question for us, church. Will we risk failure to find life abundant? And will we choose our call again, even when it hurts us? And will we be that mustard seed that one seed of love that grows a whole tree of love. May we be those people. May we be the called. Amen.